consider, if you will, the humble Commodore 64. Despite its muddy grey colour palette and the fact that it looks like it was carved out of a block of fudge, it remains the best selling computer of all time. Massive amounts of software support, coupled with hardware sprites and the legendary SID chip providing the sound, means this computer is popular with enthusiasts even today. In the USA, Commodore's homeland, the Commodore 64 often came with the fairly lethargic 5.25 inch disk drive. Here in the UK and Europe, however, these were horrendously expensive, so most Commodore users ended up using the even slower dataset. In recent years, new peripherals such as the SD2 IEC have provided a memory card to C64 option by at least partially emulating the 1541 disk drive. But tape users have been out of luck, as the dataset does some fairly funky things with the sound before it's delivered to the cassette port, making hooking up external audio devices inelegant and reliant on things like cassette adapters and mobile apps that play tap files. Now all of that has changed. Due to the outstanding work of Mr. Peter Edwards, we can now build a device that will interpret and load tap files directly from an SD card for less than $20, which is about 14 quid in English money and under 18 euros in Europe land. If you want to go posh, there is even a kit. This is that kit. Ladies and gentlemen, I present the Tapino. Tapuino. The Tapuino? Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Mark Fixes Stuff. In this series of short videos, we're going to be building the Tapuino by Peter Edwards, and he's been kind enough to send me a deluxe kit. Links to purchase this kit and others can be found down below. So, what is the Tapuino? Well, it's an Arduino based Commodore dataset emulator which allows you to play tap files directly into some Commodore computers without the need for a tape drive. Tap files are loaded onto a micro SD card, which is then placed into the micro SD adapter which connects to the Tapuino. So, what's in the kit? Well, the first thing we can see is this high quality PCB. This is version 1.7 of the R2 Tapuino. So we have some standard female DuPont cables, um, a load of passives, we've got some resistors, some capacitors, some bead caps, uh, some dip sockets up here, we've got some headers. This is the SD card adapter, um, standard stuff, very nice build quality. Catalax is the brand I've never heard of, but I'm sure it works fine, the usual blue color for this sort of thing. Uh, we've got a 16 by two backlit display, I2C with backpack. Uh, project box, loads of other little bits like header pins and um, uh, switch, mechanical switch. This is the Deke Robot Nano Arduino compatible device that we're going to program. Little bits like the um, LED holders, the grommet for the cable that's going to go to the Commodore 64, the socket type for the other type of Commodore data set, the name of which escapes me at the moment, and a buzzer some switches, um, that looks like an opto coupler and a muxer demuxer, which obviously go into the dip deal sockets down there. And some nuts and bolts, cartridge connectors and screws to make up the interface cable to the computer. As mentioned before, this is uh, Tapuino R2 version 1.7. And here's a heads up, this is an early version of the board which needs some fixes for the LEDs and buzzer to work. And we're going to do those in this video before we move on to the second video, which will show a standard build. So we can then all continue together. I repeat that the one that you buy today has already had these fixes implemented on the board. Okay, so here's the board in my handy handy clamp. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a good old wipe over with some isopropyl alcohol. Uh, put some isopropyl alcohol here. And um, love the smell of IPA in the morning and the afternoon. So, why am I doing this? I'm just going all over the top of IPA just to clean off any grease from my fingers that I've been handling, I'm going to give it a good old dousing. Okay, there we go. Of course the IPA will um, clean off the grease, clean all of the joints and then handily evaporate. Just unclamp that a little bit. 
slide it out of my vice. And then, uh, yeah, I'm actually doing the vice up tight on this board. I'm just, just enough to grip it so it doesn't move about. There's a handy slot in the vice, you see. Uh, yep, yeah, clean that off there. All good. Excellent. Right, because of an error with the buzzer and the LED circuit, what we're going to need to do is redirect the legs from resistor 5 and resistor 7 down to a small patch that we're going to expose here on the copper by stripping away the coating. And we are also going to cut a track on the back, which is here just underneath the uh, W of Sweet Little Mystery. And again, expose some copper underneath here, and with the leg of the resistor, we're going to make a small shun, a jumper from there to there. I was cutting that, and we'll check that with a meter to make sure that no continuity flows between these two points. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut through this track here. Using a craft knife here. And when I do this, I like to make two that's nowhere near through yet. Two um very difficult to work around the camera here. Okay, so now we're going to check that with the meter. Okay, so the meter's in continuity mode. Uh, I'm going to check that I've actually cut this track effectively. Um, what I like to do when I cut a track is pop one lead in there and then see if I can yeah, get a bit of a noise. Okay, and then one. That kind of proves that the meter's working from there to there. So these pads are working, but when I go into the pads, nothing. When I come into here, yep. When I go there to there, yep. But absolutely nothing when I go there to there. So the pad is cut. Great. Next we're going to expose some copper here so that we can solder the lead of the resistor back over onto the ground plane. Okay, so uh, moving on with actually making a little patch here. What I want to do is just make a square first. The copper on this board is really quite thick, so it's basically, they call it sanding in the instructions, but it's basically just exposing the copper. So you might do on some corroded track or a bit of flux won't go miss on this by the way. Let's have a look what we've got here. Okay, it's not too bad. A bit ugly, like I say, on the uh, newer version of the boards, none of this is necessary, but thought I'd chat anyway if like me you've had the product sitting around for um, well over a year I think there we go we have a little dab of IPA on that just to keep it all copacetic a little dab of IPA and surface stuff off there we go that's the kitty right there. Good. So that is ready for the first part of the fix. So I'm going to start putting passive components in. Um, these are brown, black, gold. Um, no, sorry, brown, black, orange, gold, which is 470, no, 10K. That's 10 kilo ohms. Um, so we're going to pop one through the board here. And we will then be able to use that lead 
here. Through there, one and two. With passives like resistors, you do not need to worry about orientation because they are orientation agnostic. So I'll just turn that over actually. So you can see what's going on. Okay, I know the board's upside down now, but I think it'd be easier for you to see me placing this into the resistor three position one and then two I'll get there in a minute I'll wiggle it through I like to get my resistors nice and tight to the board so there we go if we splay the legs on the other side, it will stop them falling out as we turn it over. So what we're going to do here is we're going to solder here and we're going to solder here to here. Okay, so at that point we can cut that off. Great. Let's do that then. Okay, so we got some um, solder here, rosin core solder. You probably notice I'm using lead, so sue me. Just gonna tighten the thing up a little bit. And we will first off put a little tinning on this patch here. If it doesn't take, then we'll use some. Then we will use some uh, That's no, taking great, look. There we go, nice little solder pad there. So let's pull this across. Now we want to go lead and component at the same time. Notice I'm putting the lead and the component on there at the same time. I'm feeding the solder on. That didn't work at all because it wasn't hot enough. Let's try that again. Okay. quite a low temperature going on here the iron right that's in lovely classic little volcano shape I'm gonna push that down board using my freakishly long thumbnail at the moment I don't know why okay quickly tin the end of my soldering iron before I put it back in the stand and we will take the side cutters and cut neatly over the top there. There we go. And what we're going to do is a blob of solder to join these two here, making that jumper and bypassing the Right, nice little blob of solder there. So that is looking pretty good there. What we need to do now is solder this lead here. So joint and component at the same time. Put the solder on. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, and. Uh, that is a good joint, I'll just show you there. See that? Lovely. Okay, so we'll prop that one off as well. Again, tuning to my iron before I put it back in the holder. So, and trim that one off there like that. Lovely. So, that's part one of the mod done. We can see here the resistor is in place. We need to make another little sanding point. 
um, this time we need to make it underneath C4 on the board so make it as square as possible it's always difficult of course because you're fighting against the coating which is there for a reason it's to stop things cutting through it and shorting I want to stay quite far away from this pad as possible um, but uh, not going to make this one terribly large I don't think take as much off as possible here Where there are tools for this, but I don't own one. Okay. Okay, so that's about as good as that's going to get. Again, a little bit of IPA. Clean that up. A bit of any residual crud. Um, because what we're going to essentially be doing is we're going to take the um, resistor legs from here and here and we're going to be soldering them together here. But first, what we need to do is we need to take the transistors for T2 and T3, which are here and here. Transistors. And this is a uh, 331 transistor. And we're going to place it into the board. Sorry, you can't actually see anything there, can you? Place it into the board like so. Okay, all the way in there, nice and tightly down. One. And we'll take number two. Okay, and we'll place it nice and tightly into the board. As shown by the board markings, like so. Okay, and now we're going to flip over the board. So we need to use the center lead on the transistors to make jumpers which go to this point here. So here, and also this point here, respectively. So there and there. Okay, so they're the two points. I'll just point those out again. One in there and one here. Okay, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to solder these legs here because when they're out of the way, it'll be easier to solder those. Okay, so cleaning off the iron, getting us some delicious fresh solder. And put your uncle finish on. More in there, I think. A bit more in there as well. A little more on this one. A little more on this one. Try that again. Can't quite see past the camera. These joints are really easy to make. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to angle these slightly so that they are away from these points here. So we don't want that center leg of the transistor kinking and jumping on there, do we? So, good. All right, so let's just use the side cutters for a second to do this. Try that again. Do it this way. Okay. Like this and do it this way. So we can avoid going there. And next thing we'll do is we'll just clip that one there. Oh. Try it properly. I cars are pretty had it now. And we'll do this one here as well. Okay, so those are down there now. 
So what we can do is we can take the trusty soldering iron, tin the tip, And that one there. So they're both tagged in now. And the joy of that is they're actually sitting proud of the board. So they're not actually running on the board. Another thing we need to do here is this. And this. Reflow that. Okay. So again, tin in the tip of my iron. Before I put it away, and I'll just to uh, use the slide cutters to clip these little pesky sods off. Right, lovely, looking good. Have a quick inspection of that work there. Of course, there's always going to be a bit of a hack, so uh, yep, looking good there. Quickly check our work. Okay, and um, just going to go from so here to here. Here to here, and also from here to this pad here, corresponding pad. So that's all good. Okay, and now the final part of the mod, which is very simply these two 10K resistors need to go into the uh, end holes but they're re-diverted to compensate for the modification so uh, what I'm going to do first is pop one into the R7 position and we'll pop one into the R5 position leads through the right hand side pull them out a bit and pop them down to the board okay there's one and that is two. Now, first one I'm going to do, for reasons known to myself, is I'm going to do the R7 because that will then help me to put the R5 on without it sliding down the board because of the way that I've got this clamp on an angle for the camera. So, just going to go in here, desperately trying to avoid the camera now. Um, and we'll go there. And I also know that that is going to go out there. Don't want to cut it off too short. These are only resistors, so if I need to rework it, I'll just get some more out of the parts bin. These are the resistors that were supplied in the kit, though. So just going to put a little dab of uh, solder, as they say in the US, on there. Bear with me one second. Actually, um, solder is not the anathema. Um, to me that it is to many of my uh, fellow Englishmen because I know that there's two ways of saying solder. We call it solder in the UK, but um, solder actually comes from French roots. Come on. Just trying to put a little dab of solder. Sorry, everyone. I'll stop that now there just to keep it on the angle whilst I go in and put the blob of solder that we need. Actually, you know what I haven't done is I haven't um, tinned that section. So let's just do that while we're here. A little bit of a heating. And before the flux has gone away, there we go, tinned that up. Not the prettiest job that I've ever done. But uh, it will do the trick for now. Okay, and now we're going to just go down here. Oh, no, we're not because I've missed completely. 
I'm looking underneath the camera now. That's why my voice has changed significantly. I'm actually looking underneath the camera so I can see what I'm doing. And, oh, this is a pain. Maybe it'd be easier to do it with the camera. No, because there's no depth perception. Ow, hot. Yeah, you melt, you little bastard. I mean, uh, you rotter. I've sold it there. I'm just going to really melt that joint now. There, that is a good one. That is very strong. Um, I'll properly do the other end of this resistor in a moment. Okay. This is going to be the first part of a series of videos. This is just the mods for the 1.7 board. Um, in this and then I'll break it up into chunks so you don't have to sit through everything also I get more revenue because you have to start different videos and I get more ads haha uh, although I never said that out loud okay yeah so just quickly tin that before it goes back into the stand and grab the other resistor go through the hole you little so and so now the trick here is to get this one also onto the same point. So I'm going to take that out. I'm just going to bend that down a touch. This is a bit of a hack, obviously. So I've done something really annoying here, which is going to bother me now, but I'm not going to change it. I've, um, I've put the resistors in with the, um, stripes running in opposite directions, which actually doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all, but will bother me in the future. Um, but I'm going to have to punish myself and leave it because I don't want to stop recording to go and get a, another 10 kilo resistor. Right, so that's the one there. Good. All right then. So I'm just going to reach around the camera and. Okay, there we go. That's pretty good. It actually lifted the original one, so I'm going to have to check continuity on that. Otherwise, my inner, inner gremlin won't allow me to rest. Okay, so I'm just going to get the meter. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, I'll just check from the lead here, actually, to this point here, yeah, which is on the ground plane. That's fine. Uh, just check from this side of the lead. Not putting any pressure on it. By the ground plane, that's fine. Just for those who think there's some David Blaine jiggery pokery going on, you can trust me there's not because I'm just going to go from here, ground plane, here for the ground plane. Other side of the 10k resistor will just give me a jump on the meter, but yeah, 683, same on here probably, if I can get to it. 681, pretty much good. So, having quickly flipped the board over. <clears throat> just remains to solder the other end of the resistors R5 and R7. That's a nice joint there. And there. That was taken nicely as well. Now I just need to grab the side cutters and snip that off. And also here as close to the board as possible. So that's looking pretty good. Flip the board back over. So I am happy with that right there good okay so that's the first part of this video series actually done um, which is how to mod the 1.7 um, r2 board as seen there um, to compensate for the led and buzzer problem so it's the led buzzer fixes for tapuino 1.7 uh, these fixes are not required for the 1.71. Okay, see you in the next video.